Hello everyone, welcome all of you to the worship service, our Father God in heaven. Okay, um, before we you worship the Lord, let me pray, okay? Heavenly Father, we are here in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. We believe Almighty God and also omnipresent and omniscient. We believe you know everything. You search our heart deeply, Lord. There's no place where you are not, Lord. Father, knowing our Father, truly, Lord, so that we may fear the Lord. We may fear the Lord to please you, Lord. We, so that we may be able to watch out our words, our behavior, Lord. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Yeah, before you hear the sermon, as usual, let me read the book of Psalm 149, okay? To meditate was a God. As confession of King David, you know, he understood who our Father God is, okay? Listen very carefully. It's very important verses. O Lord, thou hast searched me, and known me, thou knowest my down sitting and mine uprising, thou understandest my thought afar off, thou compassed my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but Lord, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast you set me behind and before, and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it. Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I Ascend up into heaven, and thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yeah, the darkness Hide is not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. For thou hast possessed my reins, and thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelously are thy works, and that my soul lies right well. My substance was not hid from thee, when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which in countenance were freshened, when as yet there was none of them. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O, o God! How great is the sum of them! If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. Surely thou wilt stay the wicked, O God. Depart from me, therefore, you bloodly man. For they speak against thee wickedly, and thine enemies take thy name to vain. Do not I, do, do not I hate them, O Lord? that hate thee, and am not I grieved with those that rise up against thee. I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me, and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. 
Yeah, have you ever prayed to the Lord? Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. Have you ever prayed like that? Yeah, King David, you know, pray like that. To be honest before God. We have to be honest before God. Because God searches, even now searching your heart, what kind of thought, what kind of imagination you have. Very careful. If you don't know that, you are not going to fear God. And ended up with sinning every day, all right? Yeah, King Solomon, son of King David, had wrote the book of Proverbs through the wisdom that he received from the Lord God. After he became the king of Israel, he offered thousand burnt offerings upon the altar in Gibbon. Then the Lord God appeared to him in a dream and said unto him, Ask what sh I shall give thee. He asked the Lord God. He said unto God. Listen very carefully. What he asked the Lord to give him. Okay? Compare your prayer with this prayer. Okay? Today. Thou hast shewed unto thy servant David my father great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness, and in uprighteousness of heart with thee, and thou hast kept for him this great kindness, that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. Yeah, he praised the Lord, you know. The Lord made him a king of Israel next to, you know, next to King David, his father. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father, and I am, I am but the little child. I know not how to go out or come in, and thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen, a great people. They cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad, for who is able to judge this thy so great a people. Yeah, he asked for wisdom so that he may be able to judge his people. And the Lord God so much pleased upon hearing from Solomon and answered him back and said to him. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast to ask riches for thyself, nor hast asked the life of thine enemies, but hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Why God so pleased to hear his prayer? He never asked for anything he needs to make him rich. He never asked enough you know, for any pride to give him by the Lord. He just asked for wisdom. Wisdom. Nothing to do with money, right? What are you praying to the Lord as a little children? Think about that. Behold, I have done according to thy words. I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, Neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. And I have also given thee the which thou hast not asked. Yeah. When Solomon asked for wisdom, God, the Lord, God, gave him even something that he never asked for. I've written very carefully. I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, but that is, both riches and honor, so that they shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. When he, pray, when he asked for wisdom, 
not only wisdom, God gave him a riches and honor. The man of wisdom of God testified of the wisdom that he received to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity, equity, to give subtlety, subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion, direction. He continued to say, a wise man will hear and will increase learning and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels to understand the proverb and interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark saying. Yes, he started, you know, his proverb saying like this. He also testified a very important thing. He said, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. A fool despises wisdom and instruction. What that means? Unless someone fear the Lord, okay, then he knows nothing. That means unless somebody, unless you know God, who really God is, then you know nothing. Even though you have PhD degree in the future. Somebody PhD degree, doctor degree in the future. Now, unless they know God, unless they fear the Lord, actually they know nothing. And he also said, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of his holy in understanding. What that means? How you prove yourself, you fear the Lord. How you prove you know God. Then, you are supposed to hate evil. Many people not hate evil, but saying, oh, I fear the Lord, I love God. It's a lie. Yeah, they did not fear the Lord, are ignorant of the Holy God. They think of God even as inferior to them. Prophet Hosea preached the message of the judgment unto the people of Israel against their willful ignorance. They willfully ignore God, okay? They, they just worship idols. They worship, you know, Gentile nations such as Babylon and Assyria and Egypt. He rebuked the people of Israel, saying, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That means because they don't, they don't know God. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children as they were increased, so they sinned against me. Therefore will I change their glory into shame. They eat up the sign of my people, and they set their heart on their iniquity. And they shall be like people, like priests, and I will punish them for their ways and reward them their doings. Yeah, when thousand years were passed by since Adam and Eve were cast out from the Garden of Eden because they sinned against God, God saw that imagination of the thoughts of his heart was evil continually at the time of Noah, okay? And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And God destroyed man, whom he had created from the face of the earth with a flood of waters. At the time, only one man his name is Noah, found grace in the eyes of the Lord. You can imagine how much God grieved because of this. Hundreds, hundreds of millions of people lived at a time. As we can guess, a thousand years. Only one man believed in God. What about these days? How many people really believe in God? How many people really fear the Lord, Jesus? How many people really know who Jesus Christ is? 
how many people know really Jesus Christ is, you know, God the Father? It's a question. If man doesn't understand the three kinds of characters, such as omnipotent, that's almighty, and omniscient, the one who knows everything, and omnipresent, there's no place where he doesn't exist. Everywhere. You really don't understand these three kinds of character of God. The imagination of the thought in the heart is to be evil as them at the time of Noah. King David, a man of wisdom of God, spoke unto Solomon his son before he died. And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searches all hearts. Lord searches all hearts, even now. All right? Be careful what kind of things you have in your heart. And understands all the imagination of the thoughts. You, li you hear the words of God, right? By the way, have you, any, some of you imagine something else? Not the words of God? There are many people hearing the words of God in the church, but thinking something else through his imagination. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee, but if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. King David understood God of omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. And he testified of them in his Psalms. We read, right? Psalm 139. O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassed my path and my lying down, and art acquainted with all my ways. That means wherever, wherever he go, God knew. For there is not a word in my tongue. That means what? Oh. Every one word of David, he believed God knows that. Same thing. But, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid thine hand upon me. You know, God followed him wherever he go. He understood that. Do you have the same understanding? Do you believe that? Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. Yes. It's the confession of a someone who understands who God is. Do you understand who God is? Ignorance didn't make man so bravely sinning. Yeah, the Lord, uh, Lord God was searching the heart of every man in the days of Noah, and even now, he is searching the imagination of the thought in the heart of every man of seven billion people living on the earth, including you. But they did not receive wisdom, understanding from the Lord, are not able to know God nor believe in him, but only believe in themselves. The Lord Jesus Christ mentioned about his second coming as the son of a man. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the son of man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, and they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. That means when Jesus comes, right? At the time Jesus comes. 
for the people. So uh, you know, in the thought and the heart and the imagination shall be the same as the time of Noah. Miserable. Proper desire testified of the Spirit of God. And there shall come forth the rod out of the stem of Jesse, and the branch shall grow out of its roots, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. That means whosoever received the Holy Spirit, after, you know, receive salvation, through the blood of Jesus, you know, all sin taken away. They receive, people receive it, uh, Holy Spirit. They're supposed to fear the Lord because God is in, within them, within, in their heart. Yes, cannot help with fearing God. Without Holy Spirit, nobody fear the Lord. Many Christians worship on Sunday. I don't know how many people really know God. Is a question. He testified of the Holy Ghost to be within the Lord Jesus Christ, appearing as a son of David in the future. Alas, man believes in the Lord Jesus Christ and receives the Holy Ghost to be born again. Man cannot have wisdom and understanding and might and knowledge of God and shall be ended up with the living wickedness without the fear of God. Yeah, it is a way, whether somebody has Holy Spirit or not. It's the way to know, to find out whether he or she fear the Lord or not. Therefore, in the time of the law, no one can have the knowledge of God to fear him, nor can do good. They only could sanctify their flesh with the blood of animals. The Lord God spoke through prophet Jeremiah of the heart of man. Before Jesus Christ, you know, shed his blood to save us. Can the Ethiopian change his skin? That means, you know, African can change their black skin to white? No way, right? You know that. Or the leopard is spots. Yeah, leopard has a lot of spots on, on his body, right? Nobody can take it out. Then, may you also do good. That means nobody can do good before God. They are accustomed to do evil. The heart is deceitful. That means the heart is man. Deceitful above all things. And desperately wicked. Who can know it? Do you know that? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins even to give every man according to his wise and according to the truth, a fruit of his doing. The writer of the book of Hebrews preached the tours of Hebrews of the gospel of grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. He testified of the eternal power of the blood of Christ as well as unlimited grace. Before Jesus Christ died for our sins, shedding his blood, all the hearts of man deceitful above all things. Yeah, the writer of the book of Hebrews, you know, testified like this said, but Christ being come and high priest of the good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of his building, neither by the blood of goats and calves. That means animals, right? At the time in law. But by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place. Jesus Christ, he went to heaven, right? After he rose again, he just took all his, you know, all his blood, take to the heaven, right? Why? Whenever we confess to cleanse our our sin, right? Enter in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies to the purifying of the flesh. At 
that, you know, the blood of animals only sprinkle the blood, you know, onto man. Only is the way to clean flesh. Cannot clean heart. Only blood of Jesus Christ can clean our heart. That's what we are saying. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offers himself without a spot to God, purge your conscience, conscience in our heart, from dead works to serve the living God. That's why only one whose heart cleans, whose conscience you know, purged by the blood of Jesus Christ, can worship on Sunday. That means in spirit and in truth. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest stands daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. The blood of animals cannot take away sins, but Jesus Christ, his blood take away sin at the time we believe in him in our heart. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice, this man is Jesus Christ for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Wonderful grace it is. One time death, and in believing Jesus, our sin forgiven eternally. All men sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Holy Ghost cannot come in the heart of man unless all sins in the conscience of man are taken away through the blood of Jesus Christ. As John the Baptist testified of Jesus Christ as the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. Not only clean, takes away sin of the world. Not only your sin, but also all sin of the world. Just like whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but receive eternal life. It is a gospel. Only through believing in the blood of Jesus Christ, all sin shall be taken away, so the man could be saved of the soul, to receive wisdom and understanding through the Holy Ghost. It is the only way to live in holiness, fearing God. Therefore, to have the life of fearing God through the knowledge of God, there is no other way but to read the scriptures. In scripture, there is the thought of our God, our God how we please Him, how we fear Him. We must know what is the thought of our God, right? Unless you know that, we are ending up sinning against him. There is no other way to read the, read the Bible and hear the words of God and meditate day and night. The purpose of the Bible study is to know the Father God, not to pile up the knowledge itself in our head. Therefore, Whosoever is born again of the Spirit of God has to work in the truth to sanctify all spirit and all soul and all body at his coming. This is because even the children of God have to stand before the judgment seat of Christ to be judged all there was and works done in the earth. Apostle Paul testified of this. We are not judged because we believe in Jesus Christ, but our works shall be judged with fire. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body. That means absent from the body means willing to die to see the Lord, okay? King, you know, Apostle Paul confessed that. How about you? And to be present with the Lord, wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. 
For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. Heavenly Father, please give us wisdom and understanding to know you well as the one, your almighty, omnipotent, and the one who know everything, heaven and earth, omniscient. And also he, you are everywhere, omnipresent. Somebody say, God is nowhere. But analyze that sentence. God is now here, Lord. Very simple, Lord. God is now here. Same spelling, Lord. Somebody say God is nowhere. But we have to say God is now here. Yes, knowing God is present everywhere, Lord. Just like the heirs present everywhere we go in the earth. Give them understanding wisdom so that they may grow, they may spiritually grow also to know more, more than before. Searching the scriptures. Bless them all. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.